Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kryptonife and in today's video I'll be talking about the new Destiny. I mean Warframe. Sorry, Anthem. I was lucky enough to play in Anthem's open beta over the weekend and I wanted to share my first impressions and gameplay overview. But first I wanted to say thank you to all my new subscribers and the followers and it means a lot to me. I greatly appreciate you all on this. If you would like to continue supporting me, give my videos a thumbs up and comment in the section below and give me your feedback and on Anthem or the video itself. Without further ado, let's begin with the video. So once you hit 12, you can pick your first javelin. So that's what I'm about to do right here. I'm heading to the forge. And then this loading screen comes. What the f So you start off as the ranger. I'm going to be showing you all the classes. The interceptor is like a rogue assassin. It's really fast. It's melee. Uh, it's close range combat basically. The Colossus is more like a tank, take hits and stuff like that. Uh, the Storm, which is the one I wind up picking, is uh, like an elemental style mage, uh, warlock. Uh, does a lot of damage and DPS. Um, and this clip here is how I'm showing you exactly uh, me switching from my Ranger Javelin to the new Javelin, which is the Storm. On launch date, there's a max rank of 30 and you'll be able to unlock new javelins at level 2, level 12, level 20, and 28. So you won't be stuck just using one javelin, you can switch between them all. What you see on the screen is a stronghold which are expeditions with a series of events that lead up to a final boss fight which will reward you with XP and loot. Uh, the rewards will be based off your level of course though. Next up was the Stronghold, which is an expedition with a series of events that leads up to a final boss. And basically you will be generated XP and loot uh, per series of events. And it's a good way to level up and gain a lot of loot. And uh, it's got different difficulties, which I'll cover on later in this video. Um, I did encounter a weird bug though, uh, with sound, and it's going to be coming up soon. But uh, I just wanted to uh, say how much fun this was uh, first going into this with a bunch of random people. Uh, I was able to clear it entirely, even if it was a normal, which was kind of easy. I mean, I don't know how hard the uh, other difficulties will be. I did wind up playing this on hard, which I'm going to be also showing a clip of the final boss. And uh, right here, Masterwork Ember. But I wasn't too sure if it was just because it was my first run and I also got 10 coins. But the loot is going to be increased based off your level uh, per chest. I did have a weird sound bug, which you can't hear right now, but it's playing. Yeah, I know. That's the hindsight of things. <laughs> yeah, we got some loot if we fail. On this chest, I was able to get four rares, and I got one rare ember. Wow. So I get to the final boss on hard mode and here I'm already level 15 and I'm like 131 power level or so but I wanted to talk a little bit about the loot and how it generates based off your level and basically levels 1 through 9 is uncommon and 10 through 19 is rare, uh, 20 through 29 is epic and then 30 which is max rank is master work but you also have a small chance for legendary items uh, that will drop instead of master, master work when you're in the uh, expeditions or other missions and this is just like a, a showing of everything that I received at the end so you kind of get an idea of what it was for just a run on a uh, hard mode so this next clip is going to be me in free play and uh, during the free play you may encounter world events and also gather plant and minerals for crafting uh, you won't be able to solo free play but you can launch an expedition and be put in a group and explore the bastion on your own terms which means basically like I was here by myself I mean I was in a group but they were doing their own thing and I was over here and getting my things done so I was able to see if they will be called to my instance and obviously they weren't so I just ran through it by myself and it was on normal so I was ranked 15 and I had a pretty easy time doing this maybe because I was 15 and I had max power level practically uh, here's a legendary mob in this scene right here and I was able to ult and just take care of both of them pretty easily uh, this step right here was able to go to the next one once it drops the uh, quest item.
So the next part of this world event inside this instance in the free play uh, basically was a bunch of mobs spawning and another legendary mob at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this play through so you can listen to it and hear the visuals and sound effects. So once you kill the last guy, the legendary, then you can go ahead and free these guys here and that's it. The world event is complete inside the instance. Uh, I do now go to the chest, which gave me uncommons and wasn't really worth it, but uh, maybe the drop rate would be better obviously if you do it on hard. So this is the loot that's popping up right now. So this next clip is going to be showing you different difficulties in the game. Easy has no modifiers, normal has 100% on damage and health, and the drop rate is 50%. The drop rates go up by 50% and the modifiers change on the damage and health, so that was 300% for hard. Grandmaster 1 is 700% for damage and health increase. Grandmaster 2 is 1500 damage and health increase, which looks crazy, but Grandmaster 3 is 3100% in damage and health increase. So there's going to be challenges in the game which are going to be recording everything you do so there might be factions in this game which appears that you can probably do challenges for each faction and there's also going to be challenges uh, that you can do for quests challenges you can do for strongholds so how many times you do it so when you're doing these challenges you're going to be unlocking coins which then you can buy cosmetics in the game so i'm pretty sure they're going to put microtransactions in this game it may not be uh possible that they don't do it but as much time as they invested in this game i'm pretty sure they're gonna do it and hopefully it's at a low cost if anything uh, i'm pretty sure you'll be able to get all the gear though for free you're just gonna have to grind it so let's see how much of a grind is gonna take so weapon challenges start at common and as you use the gun you have to get x amount of kills and once you get x amount of kills for that gun the challenge one will be complete the common will go to uncommon which then unlocks a blueprint you can craft that blueprint with the required materials which you'll need shards and stuff that you can find inside chests and and the free play open world uh mode so once you do all that then you can go ahead and advance to another gun if you want but you can't use or unlock, I guess, a blueprint unless you find that gun first because I was missing three. So I'm not sure if that was done intentionally. Maybe they didn't give you all the weapons in the open beta or maybe I just didn't find those last three. So once you move up to a higher level rarity uh, loot, the feature will be called inscriptions. This is like a stat boost increase. The components, gear and weapons get these stats you can't per se re-roll the the stats so you basically have to keep crafting until you get favorable stats so you're going to be grinding quite a bit and i mean this game is basically about that is about grinding non-stop and trying to get the best gear possible i'm um, showing here some of the customization which is super detailed a lot of people were complaining they weren't able to i guess see that you can change the color on the right hand side um I figured it out pretty easily but uh i had talked to somebody and they said they were having issues so i'm not sure how many other people were having issues but you can tell that the customization in this game is very detailed and they put a lot of work into it so you know that when you progress that you're going to be changing out your uh, javelin quite often and having all kinds of color schemes and there's even vinyls uh which i, I call them decals i guess they're like kind of faction oriented or pre-printed um equipment you know they give you a different look if you're not too shabby about wanting to paint up your guy a certain way or gal and i mean it's pretty cool it gives me that destiny feel where you can just kind of like add all kinds of different color paint and stuff like that i think they did a good job um by far with this 
uh i really don't think that they should put microtransactions in the game i think they're gonna do it anyways because you know you see purple shards there uh it's only 25 points for certain things it doesn't seem too hard especially that you're getting like five uh coins uh, run on stronghold and stuff like that and you saw on the first run that i did i got 10 coins and some masterwork stuff so who knows what's gonna happen when the game actually launches but um, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to buy the game right away. Uh, I'll probably let it sit a couple days, see what people say, see what they don't like about it. And I'm going to be showing you right here the emotes. You can tell that they're putting all kinds of cosmetic stuff in the game. So you can personalize your javelin the way you want. You know, you can be all fancy and you can have all kinds of different emotes here. There's like commons, uh, uncommon emotes and... You got epic emotes, so when you complete a mission, you look like a badass. Or, you know, you can just do this in the open world with your friends and just kind of show off your, your stuff and flex, you know. So I wanted to add on a side note that you'll be getting contracts in the game, which are like missions. Um, these people in Fort Tarsus will basically come up to you or you'll run into them and interact. And they'll give you these contracts that uh, are repeatable and randomized expeditions which will be offering uh, legendary drops and they'll be more difficult than regular missions so this is another way of getting legendary drops uh, besides probably instances that bosses uh, in the stronghold and stuff like that on the harder difficulties and uh, I wanted to also add on another note that the video is going to be wrapping up soon so if you're still here watching the video I just want to thank you and I greatly appreciate all your support uh, if you support me, you know, I, it will just keep pushing me to make better videos, you know, I'm still learning everything. Uh, so if you click subscribe, you know, I promise that I'll keep improving. Uh, I just want to say thank you for watching. And I would like to hear your thoughts on Anthem. I would like to also hear your thoughts in the comment section below about my video, what you liked about it, what you don't like about it. Anything that you say I can reply back to and we can have a conversation about improving. Uh, but I would like to hear what your thoughts on on Anthem. Do you like it? Do you don't like it? Uh, the Frostbite engine is pretty amazing. It's visually awesome. And traversing through the world, uh, flying is pretty cool in the open free play. So the only thing I don't like is these loading screens. These loading screens are super long. And I'm going to end it on that note. Crypto Knife, out.